list. Authorities have lifted the lid on evidence found in the home of Brian Koberger, marking the latest developments in a horror case that has gripped the nation for two months. A search warrant was executed at Mr Koberger's apartment in Washington on the 30th of December. This was the same day that he was arrested at his parents' home in Pennsylvania on charges of murder for Kayla Gonzalez, Maddie Mogan, Sana Canodal and Ethan Chapin on the 13th of November in Idaho, Moscow. A record of evidence recovered during the apartment search was unsealed, revealing the seizures of 15 items, including receipts, hairs, a computer tower and a disposable glove, amongst other peculiar items. But what significance, if any, can actually be gleaned from the list of evidence that has been recovered? Now, one of the outlets spoke to Dr. Monte Miller, a former crime scene investigator and forensic expert from Texas Department of Public Safety and a former FBI agent, Jennifer Coffindaffer, for their takes on each item. Now, Mr. Koberger, as we know, is assumed innocent until proven guilty at trial, but is facing the death penalty if charged with murder of the four students. Now, in the search warrant, investigators listed items including stains, cuttings of a mattress cover and a reddish brown stain on an uncovered pillow, a dark spot, assuming that it could likely be blood. A reddish brown stain is a euthanism for we found something that looks like blood, Dr. Miller said. It might be blood from one of the victims. It might be blood from Brian. We don't know until we test it. Well, they'll be able to get DNA if it is blood. But again, they're looking for anything, any kind of DNA evidence that might have come from the crime scene. Dr. Miller noted that while stains on clothing and bedding are not necessarily unusual, investigators will try to link the evidence found at the Pullman apartment to the crime scene in Moscow. The likelihood that any of the stains came from the crime scene is going to be dependent on how well he cleaned up afterwards. To a search warrant record, investigators also seized one receipt from Walmart, which we spoke about on the last episode two from Marshalls and a tag from clothing brand Dickies. Now, Dr. Miller said investigators could seek to prove that the items listed on those receipts and whatever the tag came from could match clothing bought and worn by the suspect and alleged killer Brian Koberger on the 13th of November last year. Now, the suspect may have bought something to wear and discard and then Law enforcement found these receipts and asked where the clothes have come from, he said, and the receipts also reveal how long in advance the clothing was purchased, Miss Coffin Daffer noted. I think that that would indicate not only what was purchased, which is relevant to the crime, but also when. And I think that's very important to see timing, to see the forethought, whether this was a planned event, Miss Coffin Daffer said. Was that just one day or several days before? The timestamp to me is as important as what is on those receipts. Now included also in the seizures was a possible animal hair strand. And we've talked about this before. While Mr. Coburg is not believed to have a pet, one of the victims who he is, a, who he is accused of killing, Kayla Gonzalez, did have a dog at the home and this was found in the room after the murders. When police responded to the scene, the possible animal hair is something that they're probably going to try and connect from the dog to his apartment. If there's a root on that, if there is any skin on that hair, they could do a DNA test on the dog. If it's just a hair, that shed, then there's no skin, then they would be able to do a microscopical comparison to exclude most dogs, but that wouldn't be to connect it necessarily to Kaylee's dog. Miss Coffindeffer also explained that the suspect would have left behind evidence at the scene, but also taken evidence with him before leaving. She said she was surprised by how little hair was listed on the search warrant record. 
I would expect those items to have been transferred to the killer. And then he, when he took off his clothing and then to transfer clothing to other items. So I was surprised not to see more items and more hair, she said. Dr. Miller explained how the hairs collected indicated they had been found separately. They may have been collected eight hairs in a, in a pillowcase and collected one separately because they found it in a different place. And then somebody, when they collected it, just wrote hair strand instead of hair. Sometimes you write things a little differently depending on who it is that's placing the hair in the bag. The distinction between hair and hair strand is not necessarily meaningful, Miss Coffin Daffer said, as there could have been more than one log keeper and the preferred wording over another. She also noted that overall amount of findings at the Washington State Apartment was rather underwhelming. I would want to point out that it's not really as interesting to me what is on the search warrant as to what's not on the search warrant as what's not on the search warrant won't return. She said, I just expected much more information. So many hairs, I expected fibers, I expected clothing to be taken, maybe a pair of shoes. In addition to the physical evidence, investigators could be looking into Mr. Koberger's behavior, including computer searches, articles that he read at the time, maybe television programs that he was watching in the weeks leading up to and in the aftermath of the murders, any gory films. They may be looking at what he watched. Did he watch the news? Was he keeping up with the case? Did he watch anything connected to the murders? Did he watch shows about crime, Dr. Miller told the news. Some of that might go with his PhD or could be explainable to him, but investigators are trying to put the whole picture together. Ms. Coffin Dever echoed that assessment, adding that Mr. Koberger's fire stick could also be, have been paired with other apps and even social media platforms. There could be some very important information they're related particularly to his searches and social media. Investigators also searched the Washington State University office that Koberger used, a graduate student and teaching assistant in criminology, but did not seize any items from the office. I'm surprised personally that they did not take his computer. According to Ms. Coven Daffer, the content of the vacuum cleaner found at Mr. Koberger's apartment could hold key physical evidence depending on how thoroughly he cleaned the flat after the incident, which by the fact that they've got very few items returned, it would seem to have suggested that he had cleaned it quite well. Among the items seized by police was a single nitrate glove which Miss Covindaffer described as a particular finding. That's a very specific kind of glove that is extremely tight fitting so you can manipulate things with your hands. They're a similar type of glove that we wear in SWAT so we can handle flashbangs and shoot our weapons. Dr. Miller highlighted that investigators might have recognized the type of glove if similar material had been found at the crime scene. But also we need to speak about the fact that Court Deer Lane defence attorney representing the Idaho student murder suspect Brian Koberger had recently been assigned to defend the mother of one of the alleged victims court's records show. Now the public defender Ann Taylor had previously been assigned to represent Carla Canodal various times. The mother of the 20 year old victim Zana Canodal prior to Koberger's arrest on December the 30th and this in an unrelated drugs possession case. She was arrested only days after the murders. Court records show that public defender Ann Taylor withdrew on the 5th of Jan, the same day as Koberger's initial appearance before the Idaho judge. She had been replaced by attorney Christopher Schwartz. Schwartz did not immediately respond to the request for comment. Court records show that Koberger, a Washington State University doctoral student, had been stalking the King Road residence for weeks, according to a probable court affidavit. His cell phone pinged near the house at least a dozen times before the murders and once the morning after. 
Leitar County Magistrates Judge Megan Marshall scheduled the proceedings for June and are expected to take place for four to five days. But why did Kathy Mabbert withdraw from representing Cara Canodal on drugs charges in order to represent Brian Koberger as defence? Is this due to the fact that this will be a high profile case? What are your thoughts on that matter?